ברכתי הווה, בהשם יהו שי, בהשם רכה הקודש. Welcome to another lesson, another live lesson. The name of this one is The Lost Sheep. And pretty much this uh, lesson came to the inspiration of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to the Racha Kodash um, from a, from a um, scripture I was reading earlier, which Lord's Day we're going to get into. Um, and uh, we're going to get into the pretty much, you, you know, you brothers that have been learning and watching, you already know the lost sheep is talking about the nation of Israel, the house of Israel, uh, which, you know what, we'll start off with that, with that uh, verse. And um, I have a particular parable that I was reading earlier that kind of, you know, kind of uh, goes into that whole situation. And um, just before I got started, I uh, actually was watching the... Uh, up and coming elder Karataza out of the Vegas camp. I watched his video, you know, about our theology being biblical, which is correct. You know, it, it's it is ethnic, but but it is biblical because you have Israelites out there that don't look like your typical Israelites. But when you check their lineage, it goes back to one of the tribes of the nation of Israel. You know, so it's spiritual, but it's also ethnic or gene genealogical. But in these times, we can't trace lineage. You know, it's not like in the ancient world where you had a lineage that you could go and trace it. You know, this is why now everything is being done spiritually through faith. The Lord is gathering his elect <clears throat> by way of the word. So let's start off with that in Matthew 10, and then we'll build off of that. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12, Yahweh Shai sent forth, meaning the 12 disciples, which became later became apostles, uh, save one, you know. And then there was another one inserted later, which became the 12th apostle or the replacement you know, for the uh, to make up twelve, and commanded them. So Yahweh Shai sent the, the twelve apostles and or the twelve disciples, and he commanded them. You know, he gave them a strict order, saying, "Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not." And you would think that people, that you know, that so-called get into the Bible and read the Bible, and claim they believe in the Bible. This should be the end of that argument that the Lord is dealing with all nations. It's the same, you know, story, no matter how you slice it. You go to the Old Testament, you go to the New Testament, you go to the Apocrypha. It's all the same story told over and over again, just in different forms and different ways. So this should end the whole argument of who the Lord came, because this is Yahweh Shai himself. When you go to the red letter edition of, this, of the Bible, you know... Um, down here goes into the red. So this should be this should be a red also. Yeah. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. So this is don't deal with the other nations and don't go to those Samaritans. Why? Because among the Samaritans you had Israelites, but those Samar you know, they, they were mingled among the the people. And they some of them look like them. So you won't be able to discern who is an Israelite and who's not. But in, then he says, but go rather. So don't go to the nations, but go rather instead. Matter of fact, let's look up this word rather real quick. See what it says. But go rather. The word there is malan. Malan. It says more to a greater degree rather. Right. So rather. Much. By far rather sooner. More willingly. More readily sooner. So go rather. You know, instead of. So, but go rather to the what? To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? It says, and as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this is who the message of the kingdom of heaven is for. The Israelites. Their vocab and them accuse us of 
not teaching or preaching the gospel, which we do teach and preach the gospel. But it's just not the, the gospel that they preach or teach. They're pushing a worldview Renaissance Christianity gospel, which is not biblical. We're teaching the biblical gospel, which is the ministry of reconciliation. That's what the gospel is, because the word gospel means good news. So why is it good news? Because we were casted out for our iniquities, and now we've, we're receiving mercy through the great sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made. And that's why it's the good news. So this is the, the main point. So now let's go from there. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 50. <clears throat> and verse 4. It says, In those days and in that time, saith the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shai, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. Why? Because the Lord would be bringing back the nation of Israel back together. This is why he's building the tabernacles of David or the tabernacle of David. Building it back as in the days of old. All 12 tribes coming back together as one. The southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their power. Why would, would we be weeping? Because we fell away. So we had to what? Repent. To come back to the Lord in a penitent heart, in hopes of forgiveness and mercy, clemency from the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai through His Son. They shall ask the they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward. Why? Because we forgot. We forgot our way, so we will have to go back. Find out that we that we're Israelites. Find out that we went off. Be penitent for our evil, wicked ways, and then seek the Lord and find out the things that are well pleasing to Him. Saying, "Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord Yahweh by Shai in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten." Right? Because the other covenant we couldn't keep, the first covenant. So the second <coughs> covenant which is established or will be established in the kingdom of heaven <coughs> is established upon better promises. You see, because we will be made perfect. We will be changed. The laws will be into our inward parts. Where we, we will be programmed to do the right thing as to right now we're programmed to do the wrong thing in this flesh. It says, my people have been lost sheep. Who are the Lord's people? It keeps saying my people, his people. This is, these are the Israelites. These are the lost sheep. These are the ones that have to return back. To be brought back to you know, their rightful place. Reconciled. It says their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Right. That's dealing with the leadership. You know these false leaders that have led our people astray. Which they still do to this day. They have turned them away on the mountains. Which is what? These different governments. And the, and the ways of those different governments. Because each government that ruled these heathen nations, they have they don't just have a government. They have certain policies. They have a, a financial basis. And they have a religious basis. And our, our, you know, our, our leaders, our false leaders, have led us on the wrong path. So it says they have gone from mountain to hill, right? From big governments to small governments, from, from massive, you know... Um, Religious beliefs to the, to the smaller religious beliefs You know It says they have forgotten Their resting place Because this is the refreshing Wherewith we may be You know uh, Refreshed But the scriptures say that Our people forsook that And didn't want that So we forgot Our resting place So right now what's happening Is our resting place Is being embedded back into our minds By way of remembrance by the voice of the Lord through the cool of the day, which are the prophets speaking. It says, all that found them have devoured them. Right. That's why we read in the book of Revelation 11 that the dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. You know, where also our Lord was crucified. It also said that they would not cause them to be, you know, to be put into graves, meaning to be put at rest. You know, because imagine... Going through all that hell that Jake goes through. And at the end of it all, not having anything to look forward to, any hope. Of course anybody would lose it. 
you know? So these nations never gave us that peace of mind to put our minds at ease. But the Lord is doing that because he's bringing us back to remembrance though we once knew this. And their adversary said, we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord. Right, and this is their attitude because whenever we go off, the Lord jacks us up and allows our enemies to get the best of us. But whenever we're on point with the Lord, the nations can't do nothing with us. The habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Right. So Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, that's our hope. So now we have a new and living way to get there through the blood of Yahweh Shai. So these are the reconciled. You know, the brought the ones that are brought back. The converts, the, the returners. Alright? So now let's go from there to the book of Jeremiah, same book. The 17th chapter and the 12th verse, it says, A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary, right? Because we were supposed to be placed up on high above all nations. You can read Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 6. See the greatest state that we were in and we're supposed to be in and the lowest state that we're living in right now in these times. It says, O Lord, the hope of Israel... All that forsake thee shall be ashamed. Right. And that's why we, we're ashamed for the things that we've done. And we're receiving pen, pen, uh, penance for it. But the rest of the jakes that ain't turning back when the kingdom is established, they'll, be, they'll have their head down for a little while. But then eventually, you know, they'll be forgiven. It says, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Right. Because they will not be written in heaven. Their citizenship will not be in heaven, like the Apostle Paul spoke of, that our conversation is in heaven, which is our citizenship. This is why the Apostle Paul again said, you know, to seek those things which are above, you know, on the right hand of the Most High, where Yahweh Shai sits. Because that is the constant feeding tube, back and forth, you know, that's cemented uh, through our prayers. So it says, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. So if we forsook the fountain of living waters, what would happen? We became stagnant pools of water that were no good, that had to be refreshed, that had to be renewed, that had to be reconciled to be able to get to that new and living way, to be able to become alive again, to come up out of the congregation of the dead. Heal me, O Yahweh Bashem Shai, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. All right, so now let's go to the main scripture of this lesson, which is in the book of Luke 15, which is the parable of the prodigal son. All right, I meant to look this up before, but I didn't get a chance to. Let's go here. Prodigal, spending money or resources freely and recklessly, wastefully extravagant. Right, so that's the prodigal son. A waster, having or giving something on a lavish scale. A person who spends money in a recklessly extravagant way. And this is what happens. What is the money? The money is this, this knowledge, this truth. That's why I said that when the Jews fell away, the Gentiles, which are the Israelite foreigners, they became rich because those riches, which is the knowledge of the scriptures, was opened up to them again. And the reason why the, the Jews that knew that they were Jews fell away was to open up the doors of mercy for us to re-extend the doors of mercy for them. You see? So that all Israel, because when you read the 26th verse of Romans 11, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. When? When the time of the Gen when the, when the Gentiles, you know, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Let me get that real quick. Romans 11, we'll start at 25. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Least you, you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Excuse me. Meaning the ones that knew that they were Israel. 
until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, meaning unto the Israelite foreigners, the elect from among them were brought into it, then you would have what? The full, complete amount. The, the floor would be sealed. And so all Israel shall be saved, right? So it's not talking about the actual heathens. It's talking about Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. And when these come out from among these nations and are, are joined back to the Lord, back to their rightful place, then all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall what? And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. These Gentiles being included, which are Israelites. Because that's what it, that's why Yahweh came, to turn ungodliness away from Jacob. So even just in these two verses, it's letting you know that it's only talking about the Israelites. You could receive it or not. Alright, so... So let's go to Luke 15, and let's start at the 11th verse. That's where it starts. It says, the prodigal son. And he said, a certain man had two sons. I thought this was a, another parable. I didn't know it was the prodigal son. I thought it was another parable that I like to read from time to time. But it's, it's this one, which this is also good. And the prodigal son, the waster, was pretty much those Israelites that wasted their, their money, which is what? This truth. On harlots, meaning what? On these other religions. Because what made us fall away? The worshiping of idols. That was the beginning of our fall. Let's go real quick to Wisdom of Solomon 14. Um, I'm not sure the exact verse. Right here, 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Meaning what? Harlotry. Idolatry. Having, you know, pretty much is comparable to having sex, you know, a, a woman that's married having sex with another man. It's fornication, which is adultery. And this is spiritual fornication, which is what? The Israelites being harlots by bowing down to other idols. And not bowing down to their power, Yahweh. For the devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. And this is how we became corrupted. That's why the Apostle Paul said, you know that you were, past tense, Gentiles, you know, led by these dumb idols. You know, that's how you became Gentiles. But now that you forsook that, repented and came back. Now you're no longer a, a, a heathen, a Gentile. You're, now you're an Israelite again. All right? It's just that simple. So going back, <clears throat> it says, He said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living, which what? The living is what? This knowledge, this truth. When you look up the word, I believe it's servant. It goes into the word oikonomia, which goes back to the word economy, which means what? House management. So this truth, this knowledge, these words are money. They're shekels that are given to each individual servant to maintain the part of the house that was given to them to maintain, whether it's the living room or the kitchen or the bedroom or the, you know, or the living room or whatever. <clears throat> whatever portion was given was for the upkeep of that particular part of the house and some were given supervision of the whole house you see so he divided unto him his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together now this I equate this to the older son being the southern kingdom and the younger son being the, the northern kingdom you know, Ephraim and the other tribes. Because remember, there was a split separation between the tribes. And when you look at the history of the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel, some, well, some of the kings of Judah were wicked, but some of them were righteous. Like you had Jehoshaphat, you had Hezekiah, you had Josiah. Those, they were righteous kings. You know, but then you had Ahab, which was a wicked king, and others. But then among the, the, uh, the uh, kings of Israel... All of them were wicked. 
Not one of them was righteous. From Jeroboam all the way down to Hosea. They were all wicked. And what happened? The Lord removed them. So he took away their substance. He took away their living. Because they were mingling themselves with the nations. What did Jeroboam do? He set up two calves. You know. One in Bethel and the other in Dan. So that Jake wouldn't have to go. The, the rest of the tribes wouldn't have to go to Jerusalem. Because he was afraid that they would link up back with Rehoboam. Even though some of them went back. And then what he did was he set up of the lowest of the people to be priests. Which only was supposed to be given to the Levites. So the kingdom of Israel was supremely wicked. So we wasted our living and what happened? Ended up falling away. We are led into captivity into Assyria. We were the first of the two kingdoms to be led into captivity under the Assyrian Empire. It says, and took his journey into a far country. See? And then eventually what happened? We came, we were brought first and foremost to Assyria. And from Assyria, what happened? We came all the way to the so-called Americas. Let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 13. It's going to read a couple of verses there. Start at 39. It says, And whereas I saw that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, and this is in the latter days that this peaceable multitude is being gathered together, and that's all the tribes being gathered together, like we read in Jeremiah, excuse me, the 50th chapter, where Judah and Ephraim, or Judah and Israel, were coming back together to seek the Lord our power. It says, Those are the ten tribes which, are, which were carried away prisoners out of, the, out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Whom Shalmaneser, which was Shalmaneser the fifth, the Assyrian king, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. And what was this other land? This other land was Assyria. All right. It says, but they took this counsel among themselves. But while we were there, we sat down in a powwow, in a huddle, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. And go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So this further country where never mankind dwelt is what? The so-called Americas. Because you, had some, you have something called the known world. Those areas around the Caucasus Mountains, uh, Armenia, Turkey, Rome. All of those lands where, where people knew of those lands. They, weren't being, they were inhabiting those lands. When, when um, the sons of Noah were separated after they they uh, started to multiply all those regions there were, were uh, they, they dwelt in those regions so it's not talking about any place over there it was talking about this side of the world and how did they know to come over here because of King Solomon King Solomon had a navy then you had Hiram which was a Canaanite Hiram had a navy that were experts in the sea they were known as the Sidonians those Sidonians had they were expert navigators they knew about the seas. They knew how to maneuver and, and, and ride the different currents to go to different parts of the world. And the main thing they brought from this side was what? Precious trees, you know, uh, uh, peacocks, which are really turkeys. Because I believe peacocks, actual peacocks are native to India, if I'm not mistaken, or Pakistan, one of those places. But when you look into the word peacock, it goes into a word called galopavo. Which the word galopavo or pavo is turkey. Turkeys are native to the Americas. So they were bringing back exotic animals. Precious wood. Different you know, gold, silver. Different precious metals. Precious stones. Bringing them back over there. So our forefathers already knew about that. That's why they, they took the, uh, the um, council to go to this further country. And what they did was they entered into the Euphrates. Because they know that there were currents to lead to this side of the world. And the Lord said that when they came over to this side of the world, matter of fact, that they might keep their, their, their statues, which they never kept in their own land, and they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. Now you have these individuals that say, well, it never says ships there. Yeah, but then why does it say this? For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. They passed over what? These waters, these rivers. Because when they got up into 
the uh, Euphrates River. The Euphrates River dumps out into the Persian Gulf. The Persian Gulf dumps out into the o uh, Indian Ocean. When you hit the Indian Ocean, you can either go to the west or you could go to the east. If you follow along, the, the, uh, if you keep on going down the Indian Ocean, it leads you around the Horn of Africa, which leads you into the Atlantic Ocean. When you look at a map of the world and you look at the different currents of the seas, you know, which Elder Apostle Gabar has gone over this. He, did, he actually did a lesson on this years ago. There, you look at the, at the currents and they show you how those currents work. You know, certain currents, you know, certain currents, they go one way, others, they go a different way. So what the Lord said was he held still the floods, the flood, till they were passed over. In other words, he held back all of those cyclones and hurricanes and storms that could have destroyed them. But he allowed them safe passage over to this side of the world. And the place where they ended up at, which, which most people did, was... On the horn of Brazil. Because it sticks out. And then you look at the currents. The currents lead right up into it. And from there they migrated. You know up north. Central America to the islands. Further south. Up into Canada. And that's where they remained. Un un uh, until the last days. It says for through that country. There was a great way to go. Namely of a year and a half. Right. So to get here. There was a year and a half to get here. When you do the research, in uh, I believe that's Kings, the book of First Kings, and also the book of Chronicles. I believe it is. It's in. It tells you that every year, the navy of Solomon and you know and Hiram and them, they would bring every three years they would bring goods, because it took a year and a half to get there and a year and a half to get back. All right, so they would go there, grab the stuff, chop the trees down, or they may have already had chopped the trees down, you know, because them Sidonians, they were they were experts in, uh, I believe they were experts too in cutting down trees and all that. So they could have just been a whole bunch of trees waiting. They just went there, stacked it up, grabbed the, uh, you know, the gold, silver, whatever, the peacocks, you know, whatever it was they took and brought it back over. You see? So it says... Um, and the same region is called Arsareth or another land. All right. When you look up the word Arsareth, it's, it's like a amalgamation of two words. Another land. I think it's Achar, Arataza or something like that, which is another land. You could go to Deuteronomy 29 if you want to get the correct um, Hebrew on it. It says, then dwelt they there until what? The latter time. And when did, when were they so-called discovered 1492 even though that you had all kind of history coming out now where you had actual vikings that were trading on this side of the world you know even before christopher columbus came over everybody thinks that Chris christopher columbus set on a voyage he was just this great navigator you know this great explorer he had this idea and this vision and he was going to go and he thought that he can get to the to the so-called, you know, India from, you know, going the opposite way. He knew exactly where he was going. There were maps, you know. There were people that had already made that voyage. But they had to make up the story to set up the so-called new world. Goddamn fly, man. It says, and now when they shall begin to come, who? The other three tribes. Because they were already here to the latter times. Spaniards came and conquered our people, put us in, put hell upon us. Then they started bringing the southern kingdom over here. So when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again. Right. So he was gonna hold back those storms and those, you know, that the, that bad weather, so that Judah and the other tribes can come over to this side of the world to what? To join together with the rest of the ten tribes for what? For that peaceable multitude. That they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. You see. It says. But those that be left behind of thy people. Are they that are found within my borders. Right. And eventually they came over to this side of the world. Because 70 AD happened. They're falling away. 
they were what scattered they went some of them went up into europe some of them went over to india and those regions some of them went into the a whole bunch of them went into the interiors of of africa you know you had a community of of israelites in uh um egypt alexandrian jews you had a whole bunch of them up in the northern parts of uh of um of uh russia i mean russia northern parts of um africa um i forget the name of the the place there you know and then eventually they migrated over to the western um the western coast of africa remember they were there from 70 a.d all the way to about the 14 1500s so they migrated and those hamites and the well-to-do israelites knew exactly who they were grabbing to sell they weren't grabbing hamites they were grabbing israelites to sell to the Grecians or the Edomite so-called white people to bring over here to this side of the world. To what? To do what? Fulfill prophecy. And that, that hit a lot of points because it, it brought the punishment on Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and some of the other tribes. But it also brought the fulfillment of prophecy later on in the future to where they would be joined together with the other tribes. You know? Motherfucking goddamn fly, man. All right, so now let's go back. What else we got? Oh, matter of fact, before we go there, before we go back, let's go to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. See, that are near, all Israel that are near and that are far off. Through all the countries where thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. So pretty much you had those that were near and those that were far. As we read here, Luke 15 and 13. And not many days uh, after that, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. See? And there wasted his substance with, with riotous living. Yeah, because eventually Jake went off. You know, they came here to what? To keep the law, statutes, and commandments. But then when you look at some of the shit Jake was doing when the Spaniards got here, they were going completely off. The tribe of Issachar was committing human sacrifice. You know they were bowing down to, to idols, you know, the tribes. And that's where the Lord brought such a horrible judgment upon our people out here. By these goddamn Spaniards. And then later, you know, you had the British, you had the Dutch the Portuguese, so on and so forth. It says, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Yeah, because Jake started going totally off. It says, it says, and when he had, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Right. And what is this famine speaking about? The mighty famine is speaking about the famine of the word. And this is why we found ourselves in the condition that we were in. The scriptures say that the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Hence, you have what? The valley of the shadow, I'm sorry, the valley of the dry bones in the valley of the shadow of death. And that's what happened. You know, our people became, man, through, <laughs> like uh, Elder Yashawamba says. It says, uh, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed swine. Right. So pretty much what happened. We became tributary to Esau. And that's what happened. We went from a free people. We left the multitude of the heathen. Came over to the world, this side of the world. We were free. We were in captivity under, each, uh, uh, under any other nation. Then we started going off. Putting hell on each other. Killing each other. Because you had a lot of warring fa fa uh, factions among all the different tribes. Which, you know, Esau, the devil that he is, he said, well, they were killing each other. They were enslaving each other. So what? That's among, among them. That don't give you the right or the justification to do it. Because every time they called out for, for the shit that they do, they want to blame somebody else. Well, you know, these people, they're doing the same exact thing. No, but they're, they're, we're not talking about them. We're talking about you. You. Are, that, are you he that shall go together unpunished? You're not going to go unpunished. Always worried about what somebody else is doing. Always trying to deflect. That's what the devil does. You know, you want to find out if somebody is a devil or not? 
check out their 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 modus operandi how they how they operate they're always trying to deflect the the uh the um blame on somebody else like the brother put scapegoating that's right it says and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him right because there was no nation that put our people at ease that put that put our minds at ease because we were in hopelessness from the so-called Latin and Indian, so-called Latin and Indian tribes to the so-called Negro tribes. We were all in despair. There was nothing, no hope for us. We just just knew that that this was it for us. We were just bound to be forever slaves. They never once, you know, said, "You know what? The, you know, any of those other nations you know, that that came before the." Uh, um, United Nations building and gave a speech. You know what? You so-called Negroes and you so-called Latinos and Native American Indians, you are Israelites. You know? And the reason why you're in that condition is because you sinned against your Heavenly Father. But you got to turn back. And if you turn back to Him, He will heal you from, from this situation that you're in. They never said that. So it says, And when He came to Himself, He said, how many hired? So, in other words, when he came to himself, he sat down and took account of his situation, and this is what happened with the tribes. Eventually, the Lord caused certain of us to reflect on certain things. Like we knew something was wrong, we didn't know what it was, we didn't know how deep it was, we didn't know where to turn to, but we knew something was wrong. Something wasn't right. Something about this world, you know, this whole. Rat race, you know, the whole thing was just something about it was totally wrong until the Lord opened up our minds to this truth, this knowledge, and then things started to make sense. Then there was that what that hope. And what was the first step Be besides learning who we were, waking up from, from that deep sleep, was reflection and repentance. Because the repent, you know, the reflection, then the repentance came. You know, and then the whole transition from the old man to the new man. And this is what we're seeing in the prodigal son that spent all his living. So this is the, these are the Israelites coming back to their nationality. So this, this is what was going on starting 2,000 years ago. So it says, and, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Right. Not talking about, I mean, this is talking about physical hunger, but it's also applied to spiritual hunger. Because no matter what, you know, we did in the world, there was always a void there. You know, it was like always like, there's got to be a better way. You know, something's wrong, you know. You just felt like an emptiness that wasn't filled with anything. No matter if you had goals and aspirations, if you had a woman you know, if you had a relationship, you know, family, whatever, there was always like a void there that could never be filled by anything until the Lord opened the truth to us. It says, I will arise and go to my father and, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, and before thee. So this is what? Repentance, which is the first step to being forgiven. Acknowledgement, then repentance. Because in order to repent, you have to acknowledge, you know, what it is that you have to repent for. And repent, re, is back, and pent, or penance, back to penance, back to feeling sorry for something that we did that was against the Most High. Yahweh Bashem Shai. It says, and am no more worthy to be called thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. So pretty much, what is this? This is Humility. So before honor comes humility. So he honored the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Shai, by humiliating himself, you know, to the Father in repentance with a, 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 a broken heart, so to speak, you know, um, a contrite heart. And that began what? The, the beginning of the buildup, you know, of, of coming back to the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai. Okay, so it goes, uh, one more verse, it says, And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off. In other words, when he was on his way back to repentance, 
His father saw him and what? And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So how did the Lord have compassion on us? He, he uh, and fall on our neck and kisses by intro reintroducing us back to the knowledge. Uh, there's a scripture. I believe it's in the book of Psalms. This is good. Kiss his son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. But a little blessed are all they that put their trust in him. This is a perfect one, but this is, uh, uh, let's see, Psalms 85 and 10. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Um, God damn, man. Well, this is good. Um, uh, Songs of Solomon 1 and 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Right. This is dealing with the knowledge. Matter of fact, let me get those two precepts. Let me go to Songs of Solomon 1. Start at the first verse. It says, uh, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. This should end the argument. Oh, you know, there was a woman that wrote that. No, King Solomon wrote it. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. All right? This is his, his uh, writings. You know, and he wrote it in a, in a poetic fashion. Dealing with the Most High, dealing with truth. It says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. And you have some fruit, fruit cake. Fruit cake! You know, read this and say, Yeah, you know, oh man. Thinking about... Kissing some hairy ass man with, with, with the fucking slob coming off. Ugh, you know, can't, I can't even finish the sentence. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for that love is better than wine. This is dealing with this knowledge. All right? Being kissed by this knowledge. Matter of fact, let me type in the word kissed. Um, let me just go to Songs of Solomon 8. And one, okay, we can start at one. Let me just type in instead of kisses, let me write or kiss, let me write kissed. All right, kissed. Okay, now. Nah. All right, so let's go back. Where were we at? Song of Solomon 8, 1. Oh, that thou wert as my brother, meaning a fellow Israelite, that sucked the breast of my mother. Not talking about actually sucking the breast of your mother, meaning sucking the breast of this truth. Coming to this truth like a newborn babe. Sucking the milk, the sincere milk of the word. To what? To grow into a new man. Because we had to be reborn again. It says, when I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, meaning I would teach you. You know, I would embrace you. I would, you know, extend the kindness of the truth unto you. I would nurture you with this truth. Yea, I should not be despised. Because when you try to show this to Jake, the first thing is they have an attitude. You know, they, they have an attitude. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house who would instruct me. I would cause thee to drink of spice wine of the juice of pomegranates, right? And be filled with this knowledge and this truth so that you can be refreshed from your, your travels, from the weariness that you had in your mind prior to coming into this truth. It says, his left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me, right? And this, and this is what? The knowledge... The Lord embracing us with his knowledge and comforting us with his knowledge. All right, so going back to Luke 15. Uh, let me see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have, I have more. Let's go from there. Let's go to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. To show you that this is dealing with the northern kingdom. Because let's read this again. And he arose and came to his father. This is back in Luke 15 and 20. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He embraced him. He forgave him. Jeremiah 31 
and 18. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. In other words, repenting. Thou hast chastised me and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me and I shall be turned for thou art the Lord my power. Okay. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed. See? I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. That's right. Uh, let's go. Let's go from there to Psalms 85. There's a lot of precepts that I... Spirit had me write down. This is a short Psalms. Psalms 85 and 1. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Salah. And this is what? A returning back to the Father. Both the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. That's why the Lord said he's building it up as in the days of old. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O power of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again? Why? Because we were dead in trespasses and sins. As it says in, I believe, that's Ephesians 2. So the Lord is re- invigorating us <laughs> inside joke he's reviving us he's returning us that thy people may rejoice in thee because the most I Yahweh I said no man cometh to me except the father which is in heaven draw him and I will raise him up in the last days show us thy mercy O Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and grant us thy salvation I will hear what the power of of the Lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints not all people not all nations can you can you read can you read but let them not turn again to folly which was what that's that worshiping of them idols which causes to fall away you see it says surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Right, because we're looking to be refreshed once again. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Let's go real quick to Second Ezra. Which we're in. Let's go to the 6th chapter. <laughs> Let's go to the 25th verse. It says, Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. Meaning what? All of the turmoil, tribulation, Jacob's trouble, the MOT to the B. And see my salvation and the end of your world, which is Esau, the end of Esau's world. And the men that are received shall see it, meaning the elect, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed. And turn into another meaning. Why? Because the truth is going to come out. And it's going to give the proper sense. And see back then Esau had the whip. Physical whip. So he could keep us in check. That way. But now he doesn't have the physical whip. He has a spiritual whip. And they're trying to whip Jake back into. That plantation slash renaissance Christianity. But it's not working. It's a new day baby. And the Lord said that we will no longer stay upon him that smote us, but we will stay upon the Lord in truth. Because truth will prevail no matter what. It's just like a buoy. You could take a buoy and bring it all the way down to the end, the deepest part of the ocean. You could go down a mile, two miles, however far, the furthest point you can go down. Once you release that buoy, it's going to come and pop right back out at the top of the water. That's how truth is. You can cover it, you can smear it, you can plaster it. You could chain it down. You can put stones on top of it, boulders on top of it. You can put a mountain on it. But eventually it's going to break through all of that and come and pop back up 
on top. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. See? So evil is being put out and deceit is being quenched. So the power of deception that they had they ain't working no more. The lies ain't working now. <laughs> As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth which hath been so long without fruit shall be declared. Right. And this is what's going on right now. The truth is being declared. It's being made clear. All right. So let's see what, what else we got. Um, Got a lot of precepts here. I'm going to try to get through some of them. I may not be able to hit them all because it's, it's a lot. Let's see. Isaiah... Chapter 45 and verse 8. It says, Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. So we're seeing righteousness once again flourish. The truth flourishing, popping up everywhere. The Lord's doctrine dropping down like dew. Everywhere. And it's marinating in the minds of the Israelites. Because the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. So lock it for one minute. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get through all of these. So, Lord, will I do a part two, the Spirit allows, because there's a lot of precepts here. So, I'm going to hit a couple more and then close out the lesson. This is Psalm, back in Psalms 85. Let's go back. Psalms 85 and 12. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Now let's just go to the next chapter, the first two verses. Psalms 86, 1 and 2. Bow down thine ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my power, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. And when you look up this word holy, in the Red Bible that we have, that some of you brothers have also, the margin and the, the precept says, One whom thou, uh, one whom thou favored, one whom thou favored, the holy, because the holy are favored. Why? Because they are the elect. They will be. They will be delivered. So in the in the margin, it says, One whom thou favored. In, in other words, the holy ones. All right, which are what the elect. Of the nation of Israel. Um, let's go to Lamentation 5 and 19. It says, Thou, O Lord, remainest forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Yeah. You know, so please deliver us soon. <laughs> Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. That's why I said he's building the tabernacles of David. So we're being brought back from that riotous living, that riotous spending, that prodigal son spirit returning back to our power. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let me read this one more here and then I'll... We'll go back to Luke. I'm sorry. Yeah, back to Luke. 
and try to finish there. All right, so let's go from there to back to Jeremiah 31. And we'll read 19 to 21. It says, Surely after that I was turned, I repented. After that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is he from my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. See? Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, save the Lord Yahweh Bashem El Shai. So this is the, the younger son, the prodigal son. Set thee up a way, uh, set thee up way marks, make thee high heaps. Set thine heart toward the highway. Yeah, this is the the truth, because we were walking down the wrong way. Even the way which thou wentest, turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to thy cities. So we're being turned again back to our our prospective tribes. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, Lord's will, I can do a part two to this. Let's just go back to. Uh, Luke 15. Let's see, where did we leave off at? All right, let's go to 21. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. Right, shod with the preparation of the gospel. And there's joy in heaven over one sinner, you know, of, of the angels over one sinner that turneth from his evil ways. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they, and they began to be merry, right? So this is going into the whole, you know, being brought back out of that darkness, you know. This, is a, this could be applied to the Gentiles, which are Israelite foreigners. It could be applied to the southern kingdom. It could be applied to the northern kingdom. And it could be applied to the whole nation in general. You know? But every time I read this story, it reminds me of, you know, Judah and Ephraim being broken apart. And Ephraim being the first ones to fall. And being brought back into the favor of, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, so Lord's will, you know, I could do like a part two. I got a few other precepts few other points we could go into. You could read the rest of the, the chapter to get the rest of the uh, story, you know, or the rest of the parable. So with that, I pray that you brothers and few sisters have been edified. To the, yes, I said few sisters. To the next time I say Shalom.